Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppy from Cracking the Steve about to react to this Blackie Speaks vid. It's titled Inside the World of Fake Streams. Everything is fake these days. I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> when, when, when you see these people who are on the billboard charts and they're doing so great or they're having all these streams, they're selling this. How do we actually know? We can't confirm these numbers. We can't confirm any of this. So I, I feel like all oh, this is fake. It's all a game. Anyway, let, let's hear what he has to say. Let's watch. The majority of the streams from a lot of these so-called big artists, they're fake. The major labels are running these streaming phones. They're running these streaming numbers. They're running these setups. All right, we in a major, major industry, and that industry is ran by a machine, this, the Matrix. The numbers are simply bogus, and the incentive for the industry, the record labels, to continue doing this is simply too high. They're literally stealing money from other people. The idea is for those eyes to see what appears to be the success they're getting, and a percentage of those eyes then convert into actual listeners. They also, and you guys all know, Anyone in the industry watching this, you know this guy, that company, I won't say the names, but they boost the streams and they boost the sales. People are falling for the illusion, thinking that the numbers are actually authentic. So why wouldn't they continue? It's so sad that music has come to this. When are people gonna wake up to the lies? And that's why fake streams is not only a sickness, but it's an epidemic in this generation. <laughs> I don't really, I don't care about streams. Fake streams in the music industry are random. That doesn't make me want to listen to an artist. If somebody's saying, oh, they're selling, so what? I don't, that doesn't move me. I'm not like, oh, let me go check their music out. But a lot of people do that. So I think that's also a reason why they, they fake sales and streams. Because if you see somebody is popping so heavily, it, it piques your curiosity sometimes. Like, why are they popping? Let me, let me look into their music. Let me, let me see what this is like. So it makes you go tune in. You know, so I see why they're faking it. You know, and some of the biggest artists in the music industry are actually partaking in this scam. A scam that's meant to keep the public in the dark about these inflated numbers. Not only are some of the biggest artists partaking in it, but the labels, i.e. the people who own the music, and certain companies I'm about to tell you about are the masterminds behind this deception. Up to 10% of all music streams are considered to be fake. That 10% is the product of so-called streaming before. farms, which I'm sure you've heard about. Everything we're seeing in the music industry right now is completely fake. Believe none of it. This is one of the best times to be an artist, but it's also the worst for some of the reasons that I'm gonna share right now. Not only is this a topic that concerns every single musician out there, but it should also be a concern to you i.e. the consumer. Almost a year ago, I released a video on how rappers are faking their streams. A video I made after this guy, Russ, decided to think uncover I what was happening behind closed doors. Russ, a 30-year-old rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, and engineer out of Atlanta, Georgia, who on paper is one of the most successful independent musicians in the rap game, went on a tirade against Billboard, the biggest conglomerate in the music industry, accusing them of removing his real album sales. The reason for why they did that, that is unknown. However, Russ was merely using this opportunity to uncover a bigger truth, the epidemic of fake streams in the music industry, which is completely unknown to the general public. I tried to get into his music, I couldn't. I don't really like his music. Like that. Simply the label of the record. The, the record player which plays it is also surprisingly oh, small and compact. That information is read by a laser from the underside. You simply place the disc in there like a conventional record player, and off you go. The traditional physical copy of an album is sadly dying, as the world has become so it. digitally dominated, and there's practically no real need to buy a physical copy anymore. Aside from if you're one of the rare music enthusiasts who likes to collect vinyls or CDs in general, the business of music has adapted to this digital shift. Not only is it easier to promote your music digitally, it's also the smart thing to do financially, especially for the average musician who has a dream of making it in the business one day. The music industry has evolved with the times, and the only thing that sadly matters now is an artist's streams. With this shift taking place, there are a lot of negatives that have came with it. The biggest one being the monopoly it's created. Something a lot of artists are seeing the negatives of, especially the independent ones. There's only one company that's in control of the numbers that verifies the billboard placements. And that is what Billboard is themselves. They own some of the biggest publications in the business on top of the only analytics provider for the entire music industry. This is what the public is basing an artist's worth on now. Numbers that are controlled by a single entity. 
In that video I made a year ago, I spoke about these so-called smokescreen companies. A lot of them work with some of the biggest labels in the music industry, and they supposedly specialize as marketing agencies for musicians. On the surface, it looks like they provide organic marketing services to artists, but on the back end, all that they're doing is receiving money by faking the artist's streams. The question you probably have is, how in the world is this even going on? I mean, is it even legal? First of all, it's actually not legal, and a lot of these people will eventually get caught, just mm. like the person I'm about to tell you about in a second. Yeah. Make sure you stick around till the end. The reason for why this is even a thing, well, let's just say that the entire music industry has not only greenlit these services, but they are aiding these companies in the process. Now, the second question you have is, why is that? Well, let me ask you this. How is the majority of the wealth in the world acquired? Is it through honesty, integrity, morals, and principles? Mm -hmm. Or is it through greed, corruption, and dishonesty? The incentive for the music industry to enable this immoral practice is fueled by, you guessed it, money. Music is not what it once used to be, and that's the sad truth. Although the shady side of the business has always been present, things have gotten way worse now, especially considering the advancement of technology, something the biggest corporations who own the music are fully taken advantage of. Now this will eventually have dire consequences, just like it did for a 53-year-old man from Denmark. In 2018, the Danish Rights Alliance, a conglomerate that was formed to fight for fair conditions for the creative industries on the internet, noticed that somebody was generating and getting paid royalties through music streaming on a scale only achieved by major international superstars. After noticing this, they eventually reported this to the authorities, and the findings were horrifying. The volume of the artificially generated streams led to this unknown man becoming Denmark's 46th highest earning composer for streaming between 2014 and 2017. Numbers that were a little too good to be true considering the fact that he was completely nameless. This mm. unknown man was somehow generating more royalties than some of the biggest musicians in the country. It turns out that this 53 year old Danish man was a mastermind behind a streaming fraud scheme. One mm. that allowed him to generate over 4.3 million Danish crones which equals to over $650,000. The man profited from streams of 689 pieces of music across multiple distributors like Spotify and Apple Music. He also breached copyright on 37 of the tracks by editing versions of other musicians' work, changing their length, tempo, and publishing them under his own name. This all happened between the years of 2013 and 2016. After years of thorough investigation by the Danish authorities, the 53-year-old man from the Estrelin metropolitan area was sentenced on March 31st this year to one year and six months in prison. The charges included data fraud of a particular serious nature and copyright infringement after having conducted stream manipulation of hundreds and thousands of dollars. The case was described as a cynical theft of revenue that should have gone to real artists and songwriters. And this is why you should never ever decide whether or not you're going to listen to an artist strictly based off of streams. There's a high probability they could be fake and as a matter of fact, a lot of them are fraudulent. The same goes for these so-called social media agencies that help influencers market themselves and build a platform. It turns out that it's nothing but a ploy that involves buying fake followers. There's so much incentive in deceiving the average consumer when it comes to marketing in general. But when it comes to the music industry, the goal is for the deceit to bypass the distributing platforms so the fraudster could then get paid. Money that should have otherwise gone to the honest and hardworking musicians that have built a real community around their name no matter how big or small it is. The real question still stands. Why would anyone go out of their way to inflate their numbers knowing damn well those people are not even real? Well, this is when we get into psychology. The average consumer sees numbers attached to a product and they assume those numbers are not only authentic, but that they hold more value than the rest. This is connected to the social phenomenon a lot of us know as social proof. Human beings often make choices about what to think and what to do based on the thoughts and actions of other people. To put it simply, we love following the herd. Social mm. proof is Sheep. a term that was coined in 1984 by Robert Cialdini. In his book titled Influence, Robert explains how when people are uncertain, they look towards the actions of other people's behavior to determine their own. Psychologically, there's something comforting about following the footsteps of others. It makes you feel like you're doing the right thing. And the music industry is using social proof to gain the trust of the average consumer by utilizing these fake streams. When people see that others are enjoying something, they'll at the very least 
give it a chance, which is the entire point of these bogus numbers. It makes the artists appear bigger than they actually are. So essentially what they're selling is an illusion and not records. One that comes with grave consequences. Inflated streams gives a false impression of an artist's popularity, which in return leads to an imbalance of people who don't deserve certain opportunities getting those opportunities. While the generally talented musician is spending their time creating with integrity, an entire system of fraudulent numbers are propped up by the music industry with the help of this mirage. It's a very unethical and deceptive market perception that doesn't do any good for the betterment of the art. The fan-driven musician is just not making as much noise as the industry pushed once mainly because the latter has an entire machine promoting their brand by plastering their face all over the place. It's also scary, but not so surprising how a lot of these record labels are the ones not only partaking in the scam, but they're the ones funding it. Because think about it, the better their artist looks to the public is the more money they make. They have That's a clear vested <laughs> interest in seeing them succeed. Now what this if this cute. artist isn't drink. succeeding? Well, there's two different options. The investment they made into this artist goes to waste. This is how a lot of musicians' careers end up dying, sadly. And then the second option is, what if we change the optics by helping them look better than they actually are? You do that by manipulating the lens in which the public is viewing them from. Suddenly, you have an artist the market considered a has-been being praised by the public once again, all because the numbers attached to their name is now of significance. This is when the corporations make another push for their relevancy, and a whole lot of money gets dumped into the career of this artist. After all, they now have the numbers to back up the fake hype they generated for them. Some of the biggest artists in the music industry have benefited from this. Mm. Another aspect of Thank this epidemic sure. is fake YouTube views. According yeah, to I was thinking, I was about to mention this too. <laughs> because as he's saying this, and I'm just like, yeah, y'all followers, I, I would never do this. But I'm like, wait, <laughs> when I'm watching YouTube videos, I do go based on views sometimes. It's like when I'm choosing which video to watch on a particular topic, I'm more than likely going to watch the video that has more views because I'm thinking like, okay, other people saw value in it. especially when I'm trying to learn how to do something specifically. Um, I'm going to look at the videos that have the most views that pop up because it's like, okay, this must be a good video because other people thought it was a good video. So in a situation like that, <laughs> I definitely do go based on views, but I, I think that makes the most sense. That's just like, I, I feel like that's human nature and that that is logical. But when you're going based on like streams of music, Specifically, like music is so subjective. So just because a whole bunch of people like a song, I don't mean I'm gonna like it. So I don't, I don't give a fuck about the the views and streams and shit when it comes to music. But stuff like yeah, trying to figure out how to do some shit, I'm I'm gonna click on the video that got the most views. Like a lot, I'm, I'm gonna focus on the ones that have the most views. Cause I just was uh figuring out how to work this gimbal that I bought super annoying <laughs> and it was super it was a learning curve so as i'm looking up like you know how to work this gimbal i saw several videos and yeah the ones that i clicked were the the ones that had the most views because i'm like oh people thought this was helpful you know so i think it makes sense Engagement in that case policy, but not with music allow anything that artificially increases the number of views likes or comments which is a little confusing because fake views have been a part of the youtube platform for a while in connection mm. with the music industry in 2013 billboard started counting all official audio streams on youtube towards the hot 100 placements that's Five crazy years later in 2019 both visuals and audio data from youtube started to count and that was the beginning of the corporations having an incentive to manipulate the engagement so their artists could eventually make it on the billboard charts back in 2022 atlantic records one of the biggest labels in the music industry got accused of buying fake views from multiple other rappers on their roster the rappers included lil uzi Vert, roddy rich don, don Toliver, Toliver. And mm -hmm. i remember and singer don i remember don Toliver definitely like he had some fake views and his comments looked real fake like they like they were bot comments I remember that. Out the music video for the song, Do It Right. And within yeah, a couple of hours right. of the video being up, it had already amassed almost 8 million views and over 89,000 likes on top of thousands and thousands of bot comments. Even artists who seemingly don't have to do it are in on the and I like The question is, how do you spot these inflated numbers? The truth is, aside from mm -hmm. using a little bit of common mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. and I like that song too, but unless the yeah. engagement is heavily imbalanced, which only seems to be the case when amateurs purchase fake streams and bots to prop themselves up, 90% mm -hmm. of the time, since Excuse it's me. done with so much delicacy and consideration for how it's going to appear to the public, 
the naked eye isn't able to spot manufactured streams. My philosophy regarding this might be a little extreme, but unless there's real life proof that an artist is packing out a venue of real people and they're able to sell hard tickets on tour consistently over time, I personally don't buy into any of the numbers that I see. And that might sound a little extreme, but think about it. We just don't know what's real anymore. Everything in the industry is fake, and there's so much incentive for things to be fake. Facts. It's really sad with what they're doing. Just everything is just fake nowadays. Everything is going to shit. Nothing is authentic anymore. You just can't trust anything. So, yeah, I, I would never trust numbers uh, as far as music goes, and I would never... Uh, let that dictate whether I listen to something or not. Like, I don't ever do that with music. Like I said, I think it makes more sense to do it. <laughs> when you're trying to figure out how to do something, you know, how to, you know, change a tire or whatever. Like, it makes more sense to, to click on the videos that have the most views because people like those particular videos. But music is so subjective. Something like that. It's like either you showed us how to put change the fucking tire or you didn't and it's like clearly if it got a lot of views you, you showed us how to change the tire effectively but music that that doesn't mean i'm gonna like it just because millions of other people liked it i, I don't give a fuck what they think about music uh but yeah interesting topic y'all let me know what y'all think let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and i'll see y'all the next time Bye.